Hi, Lewis Kemper here in my Wanderer Adventures. A lot has happened since I last uh, posted a video. We've covered a lot of ground. So I thought it would be best just to show you on a map first and then show you some excerpts of the things that we saw along the way. So let's go take a look at the map. So I wanted to show you on the map where we've been in the past week. We started below Prince George in the other video. And I'm going to just zoom in here a little bit. So we started here. We came up past McLeod Lake. We took this route to Fort St. John. Then up 97 where we had wildfire concerns. We had a little bit of smoke but nothing too bad. Nothing real heavy. I did wear a mask for part of this drive. We went up to Fort Nelson, stocked up and got gas. And we went to about here where we were hoping to camp. We found a really wonderful spot. But then a wildfire here, just a little bit north of the road up in this area, broke out and it tripled in size in the day. So we left there. Well, I'm totally bummed. We had a great campsite. We were hoping to spend two nights here. It was beautiful right by the river. We were watching a little fire that was nearby and the fire just tripled in size and went from under control to out of control. The smoke's supposed to come our way. So we decided to bug out, and I'm totally bummed because it was such a great place. Had the awning set up and everything. I was really hoping to uh, have a place that we could just settle down for a little bit. Now we've got to scramble and try to find somewhere else, and it's getting close to dinner time, and all our plans are screwed up. So I'm a little bit bummed about that, but at least we won't be here for the smoke and the fire. So. I guess it could be worse. It was such a nice place. And drove a little further, probably to an area about here where we spent the night. Well, we got this place from our wonderful campsite. We ended up somewhere pretty nice. This is where we're gonna spend the night. It's just starting to rain. You can hear the thunder, the lightning is crashing overhead, but we're far from the fire now. So I think we'll be good. All right, now I'm cooking some salmon. Waiting for the rains to start. And dinner. I had plans for a more elaborate dinner at the other place, but it was about dinner time and we had to get up and go. So that's what happens sometimes. But we make do. So this is it. Life on the road. Well, the rain's starting to get a little bit louder on the roof. It'll be interesting to see how hard it gets. Hopefully we're safe here. But my dinner's ready and I'm going to enjoy. Well, the rains came along with the lightning, the thunder. But I'm safe and secure here in Wanderer. I'm going to eat my dinner and ride out the storm. Then the next day we had what I would say was probably one of the best days ever. Going over Summit Pass and Summit Lake and up 97 and past Muncho Lake Provincial Park. And we saw lots of wildlife here. We saw a beautiful lake. It was quite wonderful.
And we continued up to Laird River Hot Springs. So I'm at the world famous Liard, Liard, something like that, Hot Springs. L-I-A-R-D, Hot Springs. We decided not to camp here for the night, even though we did get a spot. Um, there was no real benefit to paying for the spot. So we decided we're just gonna boondock somewhere close by, but we're coming in for the day use here to use the hot springs. So this is Laird Hot Springs. Bunch of old people sitting in the hot springs. And though certain areas are hotter than others, but I forget what they said. I guess I'll learn. So this is the cold end of the pool or the cooler end of the warm pool. If you go over that barrier that you can see at the end and go down quite a ways, it gets very interesting. The banks go above you and you're actually going underneath logs and things, but the water is very shallow and I couldn't go under and do that and hold the phone at the same time. And if you go far enough that way, it gets very cold. So this is kind of the medium spot. <laughs> and way down there is the very hot spot. That's why nobody's there. Pretty cool spot though. So the hot springs were wonderful. There was lots of different temperatures. You could get any temperature you wanted and be comfortable from really hot to cold. If you ventured down to the cold side, there was this like kind of cool tunnel you could go through to where it got really cold and you were, the, the banks of the water, the river were above you and you were going under logs. It was pretty neat. And my favorite part was the, there's a little waterfall separating the two pools. And I sat under that waterfall and got the greatest massage. It felt so good. I highly recommend Laird Hot Springs. And we spent a night here and went to the hot springs twice and that was a really wonderful experience. And from here I'm going to scroll the map a little bit. So we continued on when we left Laird Hot Springs and we went somewhere I'm gonna guess it was somewhere right around here it's hard to tell on this map I think we were back into BC actually so I think we're right about here where we spent the worst night of the trip <sighs> last night was the worst ever I don't even know how to describe it I turned off the lights around 11 11 30 and all of a sudden I could hear all this buzzing sound inside the van. I turned my lights back on and there were at least 60 mosquitoes inside the van. I have no idea how they got in here. All the windows are sealed, the doors are closed. I have no idea. But I spent from 11.30 to about two o'clock in the morning killing mosquitoes. There's mosquitoes smashed all over the walls of the van. There's mosquitoes dead carcasses laying on the floor. There's mosquitoes in my sink. Uh, there's dead mosquitoes everywhere. And finally, I got it down to, I guess there were maybe four or five left. I tried to sleep and I had to put the mosquito net on. They were buzzing around my head. Finally, around 4.30, I woke, got up, uh, killed about another dozen mosquitoes, put my AirPods in so I could cancel out the noise and got about two hours of sleep. Now I think there's probably only two or three left in the van, as far as I can tell. They don't seem to be coming in again, so I have no idea how that happened. And I just radioed over to Brenda and Jed, and they had the same experience in their van. So it's not like there was something weird going on here, just in my van. Uh, with my windows or something. I just, I have no idea how they all got in. And Jed and Brenda said they would, you know, kill 10 and a couple hours, you know, turn off the lights and then there'd be 10 more. But 
when I turned my lights on, all 60 of them were in here at once. It was just incredible. Uh, I hope I never experience anything like that again. Ugh. The next day, we went through Watson Lake to the signpost forest. So this is the sign forest. And people come from all over and put up a sign. And I'm totally bummed because I knew about this. And I really wanted to make a wanderer sign to put up here. And I never got around to it. But it's a sight to see. That's for sure. And this is just the front row. I mean, look at it. It goes on and on and on. So, if you're ever passing by this way, be more prepared than I was. Make yourself a sign. Bring a hammer and a nail. And add your sign to the forest. That is, if you can find a place to put one. I haven't seen a blank place yet. Wow, I wonder how they got up there. Not only did they bring a hammer and nails, they brought ladders. Oh, there's some spaces up there if you bring a ladder. So if you pass by this way, you may have to bring a ladder or your climbing ropes. But this is really something to see. I'm not even a quarter of the way through. It just keeps going and going. Well, these people don't live too far from me. Roseville and Nevada City. Pretty cool. Well, I'm not gonna show you the whole thing because we'll probably be here an hour just looking at signs. But you get the gist of it. It's pretty special, pretty amazing place. I'm really glad I stopped here. Then we continued on one And we went up into Whitehorse, stopping at Miles Canyon on the way in. In Whitehorse, we did a fair amount of shopping and uh, getting gas, those kinds of things. And then when we left Whitehorse, we went north on two and spent two nights at Fox Lake.
from Fox Lake. I'm going to scroll again. We went up to CarMax and we spent the night on this gravel road here. Then back in the CarMax did laundry and continued on up to to a spot somewhere around here on, right above the Stewart River where we spent the night and then the next day on Canada Day we came into Dawson City in time to see the Canada Day Parade. Oh, shit. I'm with the it's still going. From Dawson City, we spent the night, oh, somewhere probably about here. And now we're starting our route up the Dempster Highway, which will be the topic of the next video.